mighty a-hole for sacrificing my daughter's college fund because her sister just gave birth to her fourth child? My 48 female older daughter, 24 female, gave birth to her fourth child six months ago. She used to work as a dishwasher, but due to health issues stemming from her second child, chronic back pain, and then her third child, after effects of broken tailbone and more chronic pain that made standing and moving around hard, she can no longer work. She tried her best, getting an office tap job, but after about a week, the woman supervising her said this isn't working out. She was a very uptight woman who claims it just always took her three days max to train everybody else to the data entry work, that she can't just be a good person and accommodate slow learners. That woman likely caused her to get a bad reputation at a temp agency, and she didn't get hired elsewhere. My daughter's boyfriend, 28 male, works at Walmart. He had much more hours when she was pregnant, but since then, his hours have ebbed and flowed. He said it will take a day in the future to look for jobs, but it's the holidays and is busy with the family. I feel a lot of empathy for my daughter and her boyfriend, and I wish I could help them out more. But I myself, a single mom working for a nursing home where I struggle to get full-time hours, and my ex ran up a lot of debt in both our names and is now living in another country. My younger daughter, 17 female, has a college fund. The amount in it would be enough to pay a large amount of a two-year community college tuition, given the scholarship slash grants she would likely get. She's applied to four-year universities, with the understanding that she'd be taking out loans and working, so she's deciding between four years and community college. The other issue dropped after my older daughter's landlord found out that they were having her boyfriend's brother and girlfriend living in their one bedroom, in exchange for them helping with the rent, and they got evicted. My daughter agrees it was wrong to lie to the landlord, and both parents are depressed because her boyfriend got a job off her one stayed away, and they would have to move from their support network. They came to me asking for help so they could have more time to find financial stability here. I was torn, but seeing my grandkids, I knew my duty was to care for the most vulnerable in the family. So I will be making calls to liquidate my daughter's college fund, saying yes to understanding the penalties, and told my daughter this. She got very cold and said, You always brag about having a good memory. I hope you remember this moment then. She has not spoken to me since. Spent Thanksgiving inquiring it with family friends to see if hospitals are keen to hire college students for kitchen or reception or anything. Made some cryptic posts about how she hopes she'll be grateful one day that she won't have the privilege of studying anything outside of something technical because she needs something where she'll always be able to find a job in. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. So your oldest daughter could barely afford three kids, has chronic pain, no job, and decided a fourth child would be a great idea? And then you thought the best solution was to anger your other daughter and mess with her future. When there was an option of them moving so they could get more money? Of course you're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. How can you not see what you have just done to your youngest daughter? Recall the advice your daughter gave you. It will be necessary to address the question of why you never see her and why she refuses to allow you to see your grandkids. When OP's youngest daughter is successful in the future, OP will play the, see, you didn't need my help anyways. It all worked out. Any difficulties you faced just made you stronger. And then she will wonder why her daughter isn't thanking her for giving the opportunity to do it on her own. Hope you like these four grandkids a lot, Opie. They're likely the only ones you'll get a relationship with. You're the a-hole. Why does your daughter have four kids if she can't support any of them? They should be using birth control and you should not be cuddling them. Now you are sacrificing your younger daughter's future because her older sister can't find a condom. And further, why are they not in any form of aid, even church handouts? Why is the sister to bail out here? The oldest daughter is disabled, and they make Walmart money. They definitely qualify for multiple assistance measures. Medicaid, SSI, SNAP, TANF, work rehabilitation. I mean, even Head Start. This seems like textbook learn slash willful helplessness to me. Applying for aid requires recognizing that you're in a bad situation and need to do something about it. The oldest daughter doesn't think she needs to do anything about it and refuses to acknowledge that she can, because she's learned that if she whines hard enough about things, others will fix her problems for her. She's been raised with no concept of personal ownership over the consequences of her actions, and OP is just reinforcing that again and again. Getting your mom to raid your sister's college fund requires a lot less time and effort than applying for aid for yourself, and the older sister sees nothing wrong with this, as she's obviously become incredibly self-centered and entitled as a result of all this favoritism. Helping family is great, but the way to actually do that is to help them take ownership of their problems, rather than just fixing it for them. The fact that Opie didn't realize that she's the problem while tapping this out doesn't give me high hopes that the enablement won't continue. 
Next story. I kicked my step-granddaughter out of my house. For context, stepchild was evaluated and examined by psychologist and physician the police department chose. The child showed no sign of abuse. The psychologist said stepchild is a danger to others and needs extensive help, and she advised we keep her away from our family. We tried to include her in our family, but she's made it damn near impossible. So I, 57 male, have a daughter who is 30, well, almost 31. In 2019, my daughter married her now husband who is a bit older than her, but not much. He's 39. I begged her not to marry him, not because I don't like him, but because of his terror of a child. My daughter has a son with my son-in-law, and my son-in-law has a 13-year-old daughter from a previous relationship. The 13-year-old has made it damn near impossible for my daughter to enjoy her baby. This child is incredibly dangerous in my opinion, and before the major event that caused me to cut contact with her, it was always something she had going. Last year, the 13-year-old stepchild told the school that my son, 22, had s aid her, and it started a crap storm of police interviews and other things. It came out pretty quickly she was lying, because my son has a large burn scar that takes up the lower half of his body, and his stepchild couldn't identify it via photos. My son volunteered for and passed a polygraph test. The psychologist who interviewed both my son and the stepchild deduced rather quickly that the stepchild was lying. When confronted, the stepchild admitted she was lying, because she was angry my daughter wouldn't get her a laptop. We had a situation the Christmas before, where I bought my daughter a gaming laptop and my step-granddaughter wanted it but her tantrum didn't work, so she decided to try and steal it. Still didn't work. I invited my daughter and grandson to Thanksgiving and told my son-in-law he was more than welcome to come but his child was not. He said he understood. So, my daughter, my grandson, and my son-in-law show up on Thanksgiving Day. Everything was going well until we hear the front door open and in walks stepchild. Apparently, her mother had gotten wind we were gathered at my house and decided stepchild should be included. I met stepchild at a foyer and told her she wasn't welcome in my home and needed to leave. She got smug, saying, well, my mom's already left, so, and tried to push past me. I held my arms out and stopped her, telling her to get out now. I forced her to back outside and told her she could wait by the mailbox while she called her mom to come get her. This child has never heard no more than a few times. I told my son-in-law he could do what he wanted as long as it didn't involve bringing her in my home. He went outside and came back in to tell us that apparently her mom thought we weren't allowed to gather unless it included stepchild. Her mom ended up coming back to get her only when I called the police. I had her and her mother trespassed. Her mom pitched a fit, but the officers fully understood once I provided proof this brat had lied on my son. Now everyone on my son-in-law's side is saying I'm an a-hole for being mean to a child, but frankly, I'd prefer never to see her again. Not the a-hole. The child obviously has either some type of mental illness or she is lashing out due to the divorce. Either way, she needs therapy and needs to stay with her mother until she gets help. I would not put my child slash grandchild in the path of this little liar. By the way, the bio mother just dropped the girl off at Opie's house tells me where the granddaughter gets her attitude. Not the a-hole. If she can make false accusations about your son, she can make false accusations about you or anyone else in your family. She is not safe to have around. Please don't forget that OP has been emotionally abused by this girl. He had the right not to be in the company of his abuser. Not the a-hole. As soon as the girl falsely accused her son of S.A., all bets were off. You did the right thing by not allowing her in your house. Maybe she needs mental health help, but that's not your problem. Your responsibility is to your own family. For real, we're approaching Christmas again. If she comes by, she might accuse OP of S.A. This is just self-preservation. My cousin did this to an uncle. She had asked him to tickle her in a living room that her parents were both in at a time. Then later, said it touched her inappropriately, even though it was in plain view of several adults. From that moment on, he would not be alone with her. He would not play with her, though she begged many times. She liked the attention the complaint got her, but then didn't like the consequence that he no longer engaged with her. She later accused a teacher of SA when she was in middle school, and it was also found to be a lie. And her family, instead of giving her consequences, packed up and moved to a different state. I hate this, because girls who have serious accusations go through worse hell. My son had to help raise hell when a brat accused this older guy who drove their bus of touching her. She'd pitched a fit because he stopped the van and made her sit down before he moved. So she accused this nice old man because she was mad. Son always sat behind him just to talk. He liked him so was able to confirm nothing happened. These kids make it harder for actual victims, and of course, put innocent people through hell. Not the a-hole. That kid has major problems, and could have potentially ruined your kid's life with her false allegations.
your son-in-law's an a-hole because he had a hand in raising the entitled brat. He needs to get her some kind of help because nobody seems to want her around, which is why her mother was so quick to try and palm her off on a family where she had already accused someone of a horrible crime. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not offering my half-sister any of our grandmother's belongings after she was disowned by the family? My 26th female grandmother recently passed away. My grandfather passed six years ago, which is when the bulk of their assets were divided up. My grandmother lived in a stipend from Mrs. Tate until her death. So all she had to leave in her will was her possessions, mostly jewelry, vintage clothes, and some art in the house. This was all left to me, as I'm the only granddaughter she was in contact with. My half-sister Angela, 27 female, is also her granddaughter, but Angela and her mother sued for inheritance from my grandfather's estate after he died, which culminated in an ugly legal battle that ended up making both my grandmother and father quite ill. The case was eventually thrown out, but everyone thought Angela and her mother harassing a grieving woman the way they did and suing for money they were not owed was despicable, and none of us except my dad have spoken to Angela since. So, going through my grandmother's things, I called my dad, uncles, and cousins and asked if there was anything they wanted of my grandmother's. The art was in high demand, the rugs, etc., and I gave everyone what they asked for. I didn't call Angela. Not only have I not spoken to her, but she hardly saw our grandmother. And knowing her, she'd ask for something expensive and pawn it. She heard from our dad that I'd be handing out things and found me in social media to chew me out for not offering her anything, calling me greedy, selfish, and a terrible person. She said she's entitled to have something and really should have had half of the stuff, given my grandmother had more than one granddaughter. I don't agree that she should have had half, because at the end of the day, it was my grandmother's choice and her possessions. But I am wondering, given how hurt she sounded in her voice note, if I should have offered her something inexpensive slash not sentimental, just as a token to be polite. Did I mess up? Now for the comments. Angela and her mother sound greedy. Your grandmother decided that she wanted everything to go to you. It is yours legally. You have the right to decide to distribute it to other family members, which you did. Do you think if you told Angela you would give her something inexpensive, not sentimental, she would have been satisfied? You know her better than Reddit does. Your dad was wrong to tell Angela what you had done with what you inherited. Not the a-hole. Block her. Tell your dad you do not want to communicate with her again. Tell your father if he thinks Angela should have something, he should give her something he has already received from you. Angela is living with the consequences of her actions. Cause and effect. Yes, this right here. OP is not the a-hole. One of my exes had to deal with predatory cousins selling off things they stole from his grandmother. They were living with her, and the family still doesn't know how much they eluded and grifted from an old lady with increasing health issues and possibly dementia. Not the a-hole. Your grandmother's estate was left to you. It is up to you who you give things to. Your half-sister has no claim and no right to any of it. Your half-sister can be as hurt as she wants to be. It is all up to you. After the way she behaved when your grandfather died, she really deserves what you have given her. Exactly. The nerve of Angela to call OP greedy, selfish, and terrible, as if she completely disregarded and justified her actions after suing OP's grieving grandmother. Her greedy self deserves nothing. But my petty self would tell her to expect her inheritance in the mail soon and just send her an envelope with one dollar slash one pound slash one euro and a note to go F herself, not the a-hole. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not punishing my four-year-old daughter after she said my sister-in-law smells like fish? I'm 25 female, my daughter is four female. My daughter Leah was sitting with me, her dad, and her baby brother on a couch. This was on Thanksgiving. My sister-in-law came over with her kids and husband. She walked through the door and asked my daughter for a hug. Leah walked over to her and stopped dead on her tracks before saying, you smell. I corrected my daughter and told her that wasn't nice and she should apologize. But my daughter proceeded to say, but mommy, she smells like fish. My sister-in-law got angry and started yelling at my daughter about how she was being disrespectful. My daughter started crying and I started yelling at my sister-in-law that she had no right to yell at my kids and that she should have talked to me about the issue instead of yelling at her. She proceeded to say she should be punished for what she said. I told her I would not punish my child for saying what she did. Instead, I would talk to her about her actions. She then left taking her kids and called me a crazy witch for not wanting to punish my child. My side of the family is saying that I'm not in the wrong, but my sister-in-law's side is saying that I should have punished her for her actions. Am I the a-hole? If someone smells fish, there isn't a four-year-old in the world that won't point it out. 
At least with what went down, smelly fish lady wasn't in your house long enough to stink the place up. I'll never forget when I was a kid, we went with my parents and my grandparents who are from out of town to the old country buffet. There was this horribly fishy smell, but just rancid and disgusting, and I kept asking my parents what it was, and they would kind of giggle and whisper amongst themselves and tell me that they would explain it later. I was maybe seven, and it was just so annoying to me that they wouldn't tell me what it was. And eventually, after we went home, I finally got to talk to my mom privately, and she explained that sometimes older women don't wash their privates very well, and that was the smell. It was so horrifying to hear that as a kid, lol, but I sure made sure to always wash my privates. Any four-year-old is going to be line of sight level, especially if they're coming in for a hug. But four-year-old isn't going to shy away from that. Bro, I'm in a wheelchair. There are days when I wish I could be as innocently blunt as a four-year-old, 